right, we need to redo the wiring so that I can get it into the heated greenhouse. And this strand is in the way. So what we're going to do is we're, I've turned the electric off. We're going to undo it here and pull it back out into this area here. Then we're going to drill through here and bring the wire into this wall here to supply the air conditioner power and I'll probably put another plug over here on the edge and I'm going to take and put a plug here I'll lower it some and reverse it to where it's facing in and I'll do it on one other side over there that way I've got two plugs facing in on this wall on the other side inside the greenhouse so that should give me enough electricity three plugs and an air conditioner plug Bought my first bit of clear polyvinyl. It's called Tuftex, I think. Let me see where it is down here. Yeah. Tuftex. Gotta read up on a little bit, but that's gonna be what the heated greenhouse is covered with. I got an old five gallon bucket of paint here. This is exterior latex. And I can't remember what I originally bought it for. It was probably to paint the vinyl siding, would be my guess. But I'm using it to seal off part of this lower area. And inside, I'm going to use a flat white. But um, that's the same stuff I used a couple years ago to paint the, the first of the fawn buckets. Back then, I was using them as containers for container gardening. But I'm going to put it on this floor to seal it. Now, on top of this, I'm also going to put some of the decking material, the decking boards, to create an extra insulator barrier. But Keith mentioned uh, what happens if water gets through because this is an inside greenhouse, and even though it's built similarly to my house and other houses, OSB on top of studs are not studs but floor joists um the in and and carpet is placed directly on top of this carpet pad and carpet on houses the fact of the matter is that a, a major spill could happen inside the greenhouse so part of what i'm going to do is i'm going to seal it with that paint and i drilled holes in regular places throughout the flooring that way if there's a major spill and it gets through all the painted areas it'll have a place where it can go now I hope that, that never happens and if it does and eventually rots this thing completely out I guess I'll have to replace the boarding first coat done So wet. Hope it doesn't rain. It's a winter day, that's for sure. Got the framing up. Still needs to be painted. You can see where I've used reclaimed wood from the deck here right here over here this one had a little bit of a bow in it so I put that board in there just kind of straighten it out and to remind me I'm gonna put the plastic on to make sure that that's straight so we'll paint this tomorrow and then we'll start putting the plastic on okay I've got two coats on the floor and one coat on each board all along the bottom the top and the sides paint is the great equalizer makes things look good <laughs> here's a little tip for you if you want to put on a second coat or keep the roller usable after a few hours you can put it in a ziploc bag 
Um, this is what I do. I'm going to put a second coat on in a few hours, probably two or three hours. So I don't want to reuse another roller, so put it in a Ziploc bag. There you go, all the walls and the floor has two coats on it right now. And now we're going to lay Tough Tex clear polycarbonate on this side, leaving the other side open for a short while. But uh, I've got my drill with a little hex head for the screws there. I've got my cordless so I can drill a hole, pre-drill a hole before I put it in there, make sure we don't split the polycarbonate. And on the ends, you need the sealing strips here. So let's go get the clear vinyl polycarbonate, vi uh, polycarbonate <laughs> and uh, put them up. I took one of the polycarbonate panels and I held it up in place and I marked where I need to make a cut and it's right here. So I've got to measure the other side and then draw a line across and then we're going to cut them with these 10 snips. You can cut them with these or you can cut them with a, a razor blade knife but this is a little more erratic. It's not as controlled. So I'm going to use this one. We'll put that back in the toolbox. So let me make this cut and then we'll hang it. I mean, it's getting late, but uh, I took four panels to get the height of this. I don't have, you can see the spacing here, the uh, seal here, but I still have to do it up here on both sides and then I have to secure it as well. On the top, it worked perfectly. I got about two inches underneath the top part of the siding there. All worked out great. Things are going great. And the deck flooring is going in that I pulled from the deck I'm redoing and reuse that wood and also the screws. Believe it or not, a lot of those screws are still good or good enough. Okay, everybody, I got all the wood down. I got the decking board in. Now we've got uh, the first layer was OSB. The second layer here are the old deck boards off the deck I'm redoing. And uh, that's primarily for insulation purposes. The deck board plus it'll add some stability um, to the whole overall uh, flooring. The first three are screwed down. I still have to screw in all the others. Once that's done, I have a nice stable platform. I, uh, I'm going to put a piece of vinyl. This is a remnant from Lowe's. It's an 8x12 remnant, and uh, I think I paid like $50 for that. And you, if you can get a remnant, if you're not picky about the floor pattern, then go for it. So uh, that goes on next after I screw the floor down. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you later.